Hey, in this video, you're going to learn how to test your Ruby applications using RSpec. What is RSpec? RSpec is a Ruby testing framework that is very popular and you can use it to test your Ruby applications. So the first thing you need is this required RSpec how to run. How do you write a test? First, you need to define the describe block, like this. Describe, and we pass in the class name that we're going to use. For example, calculator, and that's the describe block. It doesn't do much yet, but what the describe block does is group together all of your test for a particular class. And if I run this code, you will notice that I get an initialized constant calculator. And that's because we don't have a calculator class yet. So let's create it. There it is. And now I don't get the error, but I get this no examples found. What does that mean? It means that we don't have any test inside our describe block. So let's fix that. Let's write an actual test. And to do that, you use the it method like this. And then you give a description, a name for the test. For example, it adds two numbers. That's a description. And then inside the it block, we are going to have an expectation. Inside the expectation, you say what you expect and what the actual value is. So let me show you what that looks like. Expect calculator at two and three to equal five, right? We expect if we add two and three, that we're gonna get five. Very simple, right? Now, if you run this code, you're going to get this message. And this is good because this is giving you feedback. The error is telling you what to do next. We need to create our calculator object. So calculator equals calculator.new. And now we get a new error. It says undefined method add for calculator. So now what we need to do is to define this add method. We define it, we run the code, and we get a different failure. This time it says wrong number of arguments given to expected zero. What that means is that it's expecting two arguments now it's given two arguments, but it's expecting zero. So let's fix that. And now we get a test failure. So what's the difference between a test failure and a test error? A test error is when something is a Ruby level error, right? So Ruby is telling you that you have some kind of syntax error or you are missing something in your code, like a method, a class, some arguments, right? That will be a test error. But test failure is very really different. It's completely different. Test failure tells you that the test is not passing, that the test is not matching the expectation that you, you have set up. So in this case, it says expected five, but got nil. Why nil? Because nil is the default value that a method returns, that an empty method returns. This is our empty method. And we can see this if I type one, two, three here, it will say got one, two, three. When you get to this point, what you have to do is just match these together. So you need your the method that you're testing needs to match the expected value. So we could do just five. And of course, this will work. You see that we get this dot, and that means that we have a passing test. But if we write another test, you know that 
that's not going to work, right? Because that's a hard code value. But let's do that. Let's write another test. Let's say that we want add, let's say two and two, and that should return four, right? And we are back to a test failure and notice that we get a dot. The first dot is for our passing test, right? And the F, which is for our failing test. And here our spec is telling us that the specific test is failing. And this the failure is expecting four, but got five, right? And we know exactly why, because we had coded the value. So let's fix that. A plus B. And again, we have passing tests. And now we get two dots, which means two, two passing tests. And it also says two examples and zero failures. So that's good. It means we made progress. And from here, you would write more tests to keep adding functionality. So if we want like a subtract method or a multiply method, you would write more tests for that. And uh, notice something here, we have some duplication. We have this calculator new twice. Is there something we can do to fix this? Yes, we can use the let method. Here is how we do let calculator and then inside we put this thing. Now we can remove, oops, now we can remove these extra lines and I run the test and you can see it's still working and we remove that duplication. And this is a good thing because we don't need to repeat ourselves. We don't need to say every time that we need a calculator, create a calculator. It's going to be creating the calculator only once. So that's how you use the let statement. So that's the basics of Earthpact. If you like this, give me a like. So I know that you like this video. And also if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, do it now so you can keep improving and growing your Ruby skills. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.